I can understand how other men can say that their makeup is is sort of pre-programmed to be angry or to explode because I, I used to feel that way. And at times I used to think that maybe I'm crazy and maybe there's something wrong with me because I turn ugly. David Nugent is an angry man. He's had a long history of dealing with rage, all his life, in fact. His father was angry, so was his grandfather. He would one minute be um, appear to be really calm and the next minute he'd just fly off into a rage for not much of a reason. Eight years ago, David's fury erupted in a way that was to change his life. It started out over a simple argument. She wanted to visit friends. He didn't. She took the family car, leaving him at home, fuming. What do you mean I can't go? All right, I'm, I'm coming over and I'm going to get the dead piece. And I started to brew at home. And started to think of ways that I could take control. How could I get even? How can I fix this? And how can I hurt back? So without thinking logically, I just jumped in the car and I drove. And as I drove, I still got angrier and angrier. So I pulled up and I pulled up outside the house. And then it was like a point of no return. He's come up the driveway and um, he said, I want the keys to the car. And I said, David, you're really being silly. And um, he just got angry or angry and he said, if you don't give me the keys, I'm going to smash the car up. And I thought, surely not. And I, with my anger, I just flung the door open and grabbed it. And as I grabbed it, I'm getting more and more angrier and my heart's really beating. And I can feel I'm losing it. And if anyone got in my way, if anything, I'm, I'm going to take it. It's like I can walk through brick wall. My muscles feel like they're, they're pumped up all of a sudden. Um, my, my neck, my, my neck and um, throat are all um, sort of dry and, and I'm feeling very, oh, how do you say, I just, I'm, I'm just gonna absolutely lose it completely. And I, I feel like I can do it right now, but if I put the pole down, it's like I've gone, freaking, Jesus, freaking, I'm getting a freaking away, I freaking have you. And then suddenly I see the damage and it's just, it's horrible. It's like, what have I done? And then it's like this little person inside me, like a child's inside me, is thinking, good hell, look at the faces, look at the kids. What are you doing? What, I've got to get out of here. A window into David's brain at this moment reveals the ancient impulse that drives his fury. A relic from our primal past, the amygdala, overtakes David's thinking, rational brain. The amygdala instantly sounds the alarm. A rush of neurochemicals and hormones, action-packed uppers such as dopamine and adrenaline, flood the systems of our body. I'm, my muscles feel like I'm pumped. I feel like I can walk through a brick wall. As adrenaline reaches David's heart, it begins to beat more rapidly and forcefully. The amount being pumped goes from around 4 to 20 litres per minute. Blood is being diverted from the skin and organs, priming muscles for action. I'm sick of it. This primitive response powers us to react to threat instantly to save our lives. Now this makes all the sense in the world if you're about to be eaten by a saber-toothed tiger and you need to get away, or if you need to fight another caveman who's about to, you know, hit you over the head with a club. But if all you're doing is sitting in the uh, express lane that's not moving so fast in the checkout line at the supermarket or in a traffic jam, or you're in the kitchen, you know, talking with your wife, this response doesn't serve very useful purpose in the modern world. The primitive fight-or-flight center the amygdala lights up 
as expected. But then another region becomes active, the prefrontal cortex. This is the thinking brain, the executive control center where planning and decision making occurs. The prefrontal cortex allows us to exercise control over our primitive angry impulse. It assesses the threat and determines an appropriate rational response. It seems clear that various territories of the prefrontal cortex are crucial for the regulation of anger as well as other negative emotions. In 1848, railway worker Phineas Gage was setting explosives when a freak accident sent an iron rod straight through his head. Remarkably, he didn't die. The rod passed through his brain, damaging just the prefrontal cortex. The story goes that before the accident, he was a considered and controlled man. But after the accident, he became aggressive and antisocial. Neuroscientists claim that Phineas Gage's abrupt personality transformation points to the vital function of the prefrontal cortex. If you damage this frontal part of the brain, you lose control over your behavior and that can spin you into an aggressive outburst. We were interested in flipping the coin in a way. Rather than starting off with patients with severe damage to the prefrontal cortex, our starting point is to take people in the community who are antisocial and aggressive. They have antisocial personality disorder. And what we then do is brain scan them. We scan their brains to look at the structural properties of their brains, asking a very simple question. Are their brains physically different to normal people? I'm going to the MRI room right now to perform your scan. This is Bill. He'll be performing the MRI scan of Hi. Rain's volunteers have antisocial personality disorder, a psychiatric condition characterized by aggression, impulsivity, and a lack of remorse. All right, we're going to start the scan now, okay? You're going to hear the noise. The first one takes about uh, one minute long, okay? Just uh, stay very still. Don't move your head. His MRI scans of their brain structure revealed something remarkable. This is an example of the th a three-dimensional rendering of the brains of these people. We then slice through the prefrontal cortex, the frontal part of the brain, and separated out gray matter, the neurons, from the white matter, the white nerve fibers that connect the different regions of the brain. What we found is that individuals with antisocial personality disorder have an 11% reduction in the volume of gray matter, the neurons, compared to normal controls. So we're finding a basic, simple, physical difference in the brains of people who are antisocial, aggressive, and violent, compared to normal people. Back in LA, Adrian Rain took his research another crucial step, beyond the physical structure of the brain, to how it functions. He scanned the brains of 41 impulsive murderers, people who had killed in a fit of rage. He wanted to find out if their brains, when subjected to stress, functioned in a normal way. What you see here in the normal individual, you're looking down on the brain. This is the front. The warm colors, red and yellow, indicate high glucose metabolism, meaning high brain functioning. We see that the frontal cortex is highly activated in this individual. If we look at the brain scan of the single impulsive murderer, we see very good activation of the visual cortex here, meaning that the basic information processing in the brains of these people is relatively normal. But what you can see here is a distinct lack of activation in the prefrontal cortex, that part of the brain that's involved in controlling and regulating behavior. So for this individual, when the deeper parts of their brains give rise to aggressive feelings, and we all feel ag aggressive at times, this individual has sufficient frontal functioning to inhibit and regulate and control their aggressive feelings. But what if you're an individual who is lacking that prefrontal control and regulation? More likely, that individual, when they feel aggressive, they will more likely lash out impulsively and potentially kill someone.
These findings are provocative and highly controversial. There's never a full, total, one-to-one -one link between brain and behavior.